Hey everyone, this is Matt Perez, and welcome to video five in our Scanda 3D part design series. We've already taken a look at a lot of information in the Scanda 3D section of this demo. We've talked about all the basics of dealing with your mesh, how to modify it, how to clean it up, how to smooth it out. And we've talked about some of the other basics of moving, reorienting the mesh, even doing offsets and copies of the mesh file that you have. We've looked at creating curves using the curve wizard, and we looked at creating a surface using the automatic option within the surface wizard. So now we want to hop in to the surface wizard again, but this time instead of using the automatic creation option, we're going to go through a guided creation. So once guided creation is selected, we're going to go to the next area. And if we have a split plane where we can simplify the model, it's a good idea to use it here. It is optional, so if your model is not symmetric, you don't have to use it. But let's take a look if we have a plane that we can use. Now in this case, the right plane looks pretty good, but it's not perfect. So you can see that it does not produce a symmetric plane in our case. Now we can go in and we can manually create a plane if we wish to make this a little bit easier. But for us, I'm going to deselect that option and I'm going to proceed without a mirror plane. So the next thing we do is go through the face identification process. Now you'll notice at the top there's a yellow box. There's an automatic painting option. And then there's also a manual painting option. And what I mean by that is think about this process of the painting of our surface or our mesh here, how you would actually create the mesh. So for instance, if this one section here from top to bottom was all one single surface, in the painting section, whether it's automatic or manual, you would want that to be one single color. And that means that you want it to be created with one operation, whether it's a boundary surface, a loft, a revolve, an extrude, whatever it might be. You would want that entire section of this mesh that we want to create a surface out of, you would want that all to be done with one operation. The areas below, you know, in this depression here, you would want these to be separate colors uh, because they are created with separate operations. So if we rotate this thing around, you'll notice that SolidWorks has gone through the process and it said, well, we think that this bottom section here should be one surface, this middle one another, and this, this red one here another. And you'll notice that there are some colors in these corners. So the problem with using the automatic creation here is that the upper section believes that this outside surface here and this inside surface should all have been created in one operation. So this produces some problems it can definitely produce some problems when you're trying to create these surfaces. So what we want to do is go through the manual painting option. So we have paint tools down here, we can cancel the automatic operation and we can use these manual tools. So the first thing we want to do is notice that the entire model, the entire mesh right now is a single color. So this is perfect for what we want to do. The next thing we want to do is add a new color. So in this case, I'm just going to select some random color green and we can manually start painting. So we have the paintbrush tool and you want to make sure that you rotate this model around to a good view where you can really get a good idea of the contrast. So what I want to do is as best I can now, it doesn't need to be perfect, but as best I can, I'm going to trace the edge of this surface and I'm going to go all the way down around the other side. Now the reason I like to do this is because this makes a single surface out of this edge. And typically when you would create this surface using our surfacing tools, you'd create this one big surface right here. You would cut it out, create a surface on the inside, maybe two, three operations, and then you would blend them together. So this in itself would be its own, whether it's a conic fillet, you know, in the past couple versions of SolidWorks, or if you manually split it and did some sort of boundary with some tangency or curvature relations, whatever it might be you would create this with a separate surface. So now you'll notice that because we completely separated it from the rest of the red portion of this mesh, that it automatically created a different color for the inside of our model. Now, if we want to extend this out and we still have the option, we still have the paintbrush, we can take the same color and start manually drawing a few things. But what I'm going to do now is add a new color. Now in this case, I'm going to add orange. And what I want to do with the orange is paint this intersection here. So I'm going to say that the bottom of this model is going to be one surface all itself as well. And I'm going to take it out to the green and I'm going to come back and try to stay as close as I can to these edges and cut it off completely from the model and then go back and just fill it in. 
So when you're doing this, try not to be too precise. I mean, you need to get it in the areas that you want, but spending all the time to try to get a nice smooth edge or a nice smooth line is not gonna buy you anything. But you'll notice that once we've divided this up now, this section over here and this section over here on the right hand side, these are now their own colors as well. So now that we've used the manual painting option, we've separated this how we feel that this would actually be created in SolidWorks, we can go to our next section. So now that everything's painted, we can use the surface extraction option. So we're going to select extract all faces. There's five separate colors here, five separate faces. It's going to go through the process and try to extrapolate that information so we can figure out how the surfaces can be created. Now, as a note, if you left this all one individual color, it would realistically only come up with one option for the surface. That would be this bottom right option, the B spline option. So now we can take a look at what's been created. Now, it might look a little crazy at first, but just make a note that we have a single surface here, this green surface that was created of the entire surrounding area. And then we have some surfaces in here and you'll notice that they're overlapping and they're bisecting. Now, what we can do is we can select these and we can take a good look at how they're created. We can delete them if we wish. You'll notice that once we select one, you'll actually get the mesh preview behind it. So you can see that once we select things, we can see that the surface, it's not really matching very well down in this area. So we might actually have to go back and change the option to make these individual surfaces in this area. But you can see that it's trying to create this with an extrude. Well, if we say it would be better off as a ruled surface or better off as a lofted surface or a B spline, it will try to redo that using that information. But you'll notice that it doesn't do a very good job. So it's trying to create it, but it's twisting, it's, it's wrapping around, and it's really not matching the intended geometry very well. We can grab the B-spline and see if that does any better and see if it's closer to matching that original mesh. And the B-spline gives you some nice options because we can manually change, in this case, the U and the V direction parameters. So if we need more patches in one direction than the other, if we need to modify the tolerance, if we want to actually display the deviation analysis, it'll tell us how far off from that original mesh we actually are. So you can see that it looks pretty good in most of the cases. And then in this area right here, we're actually getting some fairly high deviation numbers. So if we hide that and we simply look at the surface when we select it, we can really get an idea that in most cases it matches pretty closely, but we really lose some of that information in this middle section. So again, this indicates to me that we'd want to go back and modify the paint and actually add a few more colors here. So at this stage, I'm going to go back and I'm going to add a new color. Now in this case, I'm just going to add yellow. I'm going to take this yellow and wherever I see this highlighted edge, this line right here, I'm going to drag that across. And again, staying as close as I can to the shadows in the, in the image. So you'll notice that now it's segmented this up into two separate areas. So I'm going to go back in, grab another color. And this time I want to do it for this bottom edge here. I want to make sure that I'm staying as close as I can and grabbing that area. Now at this stage, you might be wondering, well, if we have this paint tool, what is the paint can going to do? Well, the paint can is a good way for you to select a color. For instance, if we wanted to select this purple here and we wanted to use the paint can to grab this middle orange section and this yellow section on the side to make them all the same color to tell SolidWorks in the next step that we want this to be a single surface. So let's go ahead and use this color tool. We're going to grab this color. And we're going to use this paint bucket tool and we're going to paint these areas. So you can see it's a nice way for us to blend everything together and that way we have a good representation. Now if I use the undo option, it'll allow us to go back and undo that last operation. And that way, if you do something that you don't necessarily mean, you don't have to waste a bunch of time trying to redo it using the paintbrush tool. Okay, so now that we've matched all the curvature that we have here, we're going to have an individual surface for this area and this area in those corners and then in the middle here. So hopefully it'll give us a better representation of our surface. So now in this case, instead of having five surfaces, we have nine. You can see that it went through the first six fairly quickly and then it just really has to calculate the last couple that we've just recently added to the model. 
All right, so now we can take a good look at the resulting surfaces that were created. So you'll notice now this upper section is an individual surface. It created some surfaces in these corners and then the surface on the edges and so on. So if we select one of these, again, it's going to bring up our mesh in that area and let us get a good look at how that differs. So you can see that it tried to use a plane or a planar face to create that surface. Now we know that these are not planes, they're not flat, everything has a little bit of curvature to it. So instead I want to use a ruled surface option and see if that gets us any closer. Now if it does or it doesn't, then we have the B-spline option and the B-spline option you can see gets us a little bit closer. So for that surface, in this case I want to use a B-spline and in the bottom one Again, for this area, I'm going to use the B-spline option. So this is a good way for us to understand how it's creating these surfaces or how it's trying to. Now there's some options here. There's some tolerances, and it tries to do its best to see how these were essentially created, how much curvature they have. So this one, it's actually trying to do an extrude. So in this case, again, let's try one of these other surfaces and see if we can get a little closer. So again, in this case, I think I'm going to end up using a B-spline and that'll get us a little bit closer. So you'll notice that as I do this, it's creating a fairly large overlap. So we're making a lot of extra geometry. Now, if you remember, this 3D Sketch 1 that we created was using the Curves option, so we have a good boundary representation of the original mesh. So we know where the boundary is, and that'll help us to trim things up later on. We have the option to modify the, the UV curves if we need to. So we can select individual ones, we can move them around, we can twist things around as needed. So we need to go through and we need to do this with all of our surfaces. We need to make sure that we're understanding how these things were created and how close they are to the original mesh. So again, these are very important steps and you want to make sure that you understand this. So again, as you can see, for most of these surfaces, I'm grabbing them and I'm using this B-spline option because it's giving us the most control over the curvature and the deviation. So I'm just going to keep grabbing these and taking a look at how close they are to the original mesh. And again, you can see that it's trying to do planar surfaces and we really know that there is curvature here. So with these more organic shapes, it's looking more and more like all of these are going to be B-spline surfaces. And it looks like we just have a few more small surfaces here that are going to represent the corners. So we want to make sure that we grab all of these and that we get all the information, all the geometry. So once we think that we've grabbed all of these surfaces, we can now go to the next. And this is our completed model. So once we hit OK, all of our surfaces are created. Now it's a little tricky, it's a little crazy to look at this. So let's go ahead and expand this folder and start coloring some of these. So you notice that we can come in here and we can modify the appearance. We can make some of these white, change the color of pretty much all of them to make sure that they're different colors and it gives us a better idea, a better representation of where these surfaces actually fall. Because what we're going to have to do now is take all of these and start using our surface tools to trim them. So that concludes this video. In the next one, we'll take a look at working with these surfaces to get the end result, the end surface that we really want to use to start designing our part. So as always, if you guys have any questions, please email solidworksupport at mlc-cad.com, and we'll see you next time.